This video will be on uh, programming language theory and introduction to the programming language theory. It's very broad, and I'll, if I were to really, you know, go more in depth into it, it will take a whole another video series. And I'd rather not, you know, I'm not. The you know, programming language theory is, you know, very broad and very, very technical. Like it really takes a lot of, you know, like it's just it's very technical. Just leave it at that. Now. Programming language theory, like what exactly are, you know, we were, in this video series we're talking about the theory behind computation, like what really goes on, like, we, everyone, well most people are familiar with programming languages, but what exactly do they do? Well, I mean, they basically take, you know, a source code, and then they have uh, programming languages, and then they move it to an object code, which is like a programming language, sort of like, you know, how we have visual basic transforms of computers, you know, binary logic into, you know, human, human code, or not, not visual basic, basic, like they're one of the first programming languages takes, you know, the computer languages, and, uh, and then, then there's a programming language, and then, you know, that that's what changes it to, you know, a, a interface that allows people to, you know, work, work with it and, you know, write programs and things like that. Now, that, that you know, that's all good and well, but, you know, what's, what's the idea behind it? The idea is that there's, you know, very, you know, advanced math going on. Like, there is um, Lambda Calculus, which is basically like a... Uh, it's basically the study of functions. The fu uh, you can turn the computer science. Like, you know, what what does this function mean? You know, what what is the recursive definition? Which is like, you know, how is it self-defined? You know, how what does this function imply? What if you combine this function and maybe you can, you know, judging by its components, can reduce the time it takes to run this function? You know, in in uh, some operating or something like that. It, it basically we're you know we're, we're analyzing functions and how they you know re relate to each other, how we can make them more efficient and things like that. And how would exactly do we write them out and understand them and uh, implement them into actual programming languages? And uh, here we have like some a little like the identity function, like you know I X, you know it, this implies X in the in the uh, formal system of uh, lambda calculus, which simply means that this ret it returns the value. Like you know it's sort of like the in, it's like input output except there's a transition function. Uh, simply you know just means return. It, it it's like finite finite state machines really you know can be you know viewed here. You know we have it's a state, then we have a transition function. But the transition function defines that if this, you know, if, if there's an I, which means identity, that simply means, you know, uh, ignore. Maybe that transition function means ignore or do not change the state, which, you know, which, which you know, gives us X here. Now, if last, in my set theory video, so we talked about partial functions a little bit, where we have, you know, um, a function that's not completely mapped to another one. Like, let's say we have something like, you know, let me just draw it A. And then we have C, then we have, you know, 1 and 2 and 3, and let's say A is mapped to 1, and, uh, you know, it's not, you know, completely, completely mapped, where uh, X prime is a subset, subset of X. It's part of it, it's not completely contained, but if the X prime is exactly equal to X, like if C and, you know, if they were all equal to each other, like if 3 had another element, like, you know, B, then then you would have a um, complete fu total function, and it will be uh, equal to, subset or equal to. So that is basically the idea, you know, or, oh yeah, and, and also here, like let's say we have alphabet one, you know, alpha, gamma, and lambda, and alphabet two, A, G, and L, and you know, we have alpha, there's a transition function, which, you know, changes alpha to A, you know, in the, in the, in the uh, syntax of the programming languages, that's why, it's, you know, programming languages, you know, have different syntax, because that's how they just use different, you know, function models, and transition states, and things like that. So that's, the, I think it's a brief introduction of programming language theory, just give the idea that there's mathematics behind it, deals with functions mainly in how you know we translate one language to another and also finite state machines you know this is one this is one place that you know they can really you know be used utilized so that's all for this one I uh, hope you guys enjoyed uh, that that's it for now